What's up? This is a shot of the PC Pat for today. We're going to take a quick look at a game called Over the Gear for Linux. So, this is a game, as I said, called Orbital Gear, uh, made by Night Noon Software. It's currently $9.99 on Steam, or you can buy a four pack for you and your friends. Um, the, the, minimum, or the minimum specs are Ubuntu 1010, a dual core CPU, 2 gigs of RAM, and a GeForce 8800 GT. Uh, I would even say that those minimum requirements are kind of high because I think this game would run on an absolute literal potato. Uh, if you wanted to, you can go to the developer's website and go ahead and um, buy the game directly from the developer if you so chose to. Uh, I'm not sure if you get a direct copy also that's possibly DRM free. Uh, but you can obviously go email them and ask them that and do whatever with that. Now let's take a look at the game directly. The... The game is an interesting game. Uh, it's a f interesting and fun game. Uh, well, in the game that I don't think I've seen has uh, th this type of gameplay or mechanic in it before. But first of all, let's go take a look at the settings. Uh, so I always got to know what kind of settings we're getting. A real PC game has real settings. Uh, these are the game settings, uh, and I didn't mess with them personally. I just left them as default. But of course you got to go to the graphical settings. I go to the graphical settings, check out the resolution. And you can see that the, the resolution options are off, off center. So you can't actually see the resolution that's at the bottom. I ended up having to just push down, 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 down until I got to the end of the list and pressed enter and hope it was the right resolution, which it actually was, which was 1920 by 1080. You have Bloom, Blue Mineration, Anti-Aliasing, Astropic Filtering, Vertical Sync, and Light Quality as your options. I just turned all mine up to Yellow 9000 and got on with it. And it ran just perfectly fine as you will see in the game. Here are your sound options and here are your controls. Uh, you, ha you have the option of using the keyboard or Xbox 360 controller. I did use both and found that the keyboard for this game felt more natural. Uh, the Xbox 360 controller just felt too sluggish and slow for aiming uh, for this particular type of style of game at, at the speed that it plays in. Um, but uh, of course that's up to you and you can try it out if you wanted to. Now here's the, the codex where you actually get to take a look at the guns. You can pick a main gun and you can pick a secondary gun, which are mapped to your left and right mouse buttons, uh, which gives you uh, different types of uh, shooting styles for each gun. Then there's the utilities uh, that I guess they're like perks or extra abilities that you can uh, use, which are, is by default mapped to your middle mouse button or the shift key on your keyboard. Here is the instructions, the built-in game instructions, which I think is always nice to have instructions in the game. Uh, and it tells you how to play. I recommend that you go ahead and uh, take the two minutes it takes to actually read these and instead of doing like I did and just jumping in the game and spending several matches wondering what the hell was going on. Not that the game was complicated, but good advice. Now let's go ahead and jump into the Orbital Trials. Orbital tri Trials are basically single player mode where you have to kill all the bots that are on the map and you're competing against the tie-in clock. Uh, before you get into that though, here you can select your mech warriors, or I'm not going to call them mech warriors, I'm sure there's a copyright for that, <laughs> but your mechs, and as you can see they're pretty low resolution, but uh, I don't think it really matters because you are going to be playing uh, on the screen where it's the mech is represented in a very tiny way as you'll see here in a, in a whole second now as you can see you got like your mech's pretty small who, who cares what it really looks like at the end of the day but the gameplay as you, as you see is interesting so as you can see from the gameplay the you are affected gravitationally by the objects, the round objects in space. Uh, as you jump around you will be attracted to one of the objects and you can also have, you also have to jump high enough and far enough that you leave the gravitational pull of the object that you're jumping from. 
uh, I don't know this to be a fact, but I think that the smaller objects have less gravitational pull, and the, obviously the larger objects have more gravitational pull. Uh, you do get a booster pack if you choose that utility uh, to help you leave the, or the gravity of one of the objects. But if you look here, you can also see that the gunfire is also affected by the gravity. So it, it will bend depending on what object it's uh, leaving from or going by, which makes for an interesting uh, style of gameplay. The graphics on here are, I think, great. Uh, it's got a stylized type of very vibrant uh, art style to it that, uh, that works out well for this game. Uh, and in conjunction with the audio that uh, matches their high energy and uh, quick gameplay, uh, I think the the game overall was a, is a definitely excellently produced uh, and fun to play on top of all of that. Now, if you look in the top left hand corner, you'll see the FPS uh, overlay, and this game, as I said earlier, just works. Uh, it will run on anything. I'm recording this at 1080p at 60 FPS uh, with uh, some pretty high encoding settings and it was smashing my CPU and this game like didn't even really hiccup. I'm getting well over 100 frames per second and it always stayed pretty much above 100 frames per second while doing all that and still having other things going on in the background. If I wasn't recording, I, I saw the frame rate double or even triple into the three, four hundred, and even one time in the five hundred FPS range. Uh, you might want to turn on. This is a game that you might want to turn on vertical sync to actually throttle down your FPS, so your GPU isn't working overtime for no reason at all. Now, uh, as far where the game is supposed to, I think, really shine is the multiplayer. Uh, where you actually would play against other uh, people in a deathmatch type of form. And I think there is like a protect your base type of mode also. But I don't know that because there was nobody online to play with. Uh, the game's multiplayer seems to be non-existent at this point. Which is unfortunate. I went and checked the Steam forums to see what was going on. And people are still posting kind of recently. That uh, they wish that people were still playing the game or where what's going on where are the people playing at and it just seems like this game doesn't have enough player base to uh, facilitate multiplayer at this point which is unfortunate because uh, the game is good this is definitely a well thought out well planned well executed game but anyways this is my look at Orbital Gear for Linux, and as always, this is Osiris. But before I get out of here, and before you leave, hit that like button if you like this. If you dislike it, dislike it, hit the, un the thumbs down button. Leave a comment what your gripe is. And uh, for some more uh, future Linux gaming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This is Osiris the PC Pimp, and I'm out of here.